Sunlight and chlorophyll are two essential conditions for the process of photosynthesis. And in this video, we will try to prove this with the help of a few activities. So first we will see that chlorophyll is necessary for the process of photosynthesis. And for this activity, we will take a potted plant which has variegated leaves. Now variegated leaves are those leaves which are colored leaves. Means apart from the green color they have, they also have some other color which can be yellow or red or any other color. So this potted plant with variegated leaf is kept in a dark room for at least three days so that all the starch which is present in this plant is used up. This process is called as destarching. After three days, the plant is now taken out and it is kept under sunlight for at least three hours. We will now pluck a leaf from this plant, trace it on a paper and mark all the green areas which are present inside this leaf. After that, we will put this leaf in the boiling water for a few minutes. This is done so as to remove the outer waxy layer from the leaf to make the tissue soft and also to kill the leaf. Then we put this boiled leaf inside a beaker containing alcohol. We know that alcohol is an organic solvent and it can dissolve organic chlorophyll or other pigments inside it. But alcohol is highly inflammable so it has to be heated indirectly using a water bath. After some time we will see that the color of alcohol becomes green in color while the color of leaf will become white. This is for the reason that alcohol has dissolved the green color chlorophyll inside it. Then we will perform the starch test by putting this white leaf inside the dilute solution of iodine and we will find that certain areas of the leaf will turn blue black. We will compare this leaf now with the leaf that we have traced earlier and we will find that only those areas have turned blue black which were earlier green in color. So this shows that starch is present only in, this, in the areas where earlier chlorophyll was present. So this activity proves that chlorophyll is necessary for the process of photosynthesis. We will now review a few concepts that we have studied with the help of this activity. Destarching is done to use all the starch which is present inside the plant and it is done by keeping the plant in dark for at least three days. Leaf is boiled to get rid of the waterproof layers and break open the cells also to kill the leaf so as to stop the transport of starch. Alcohol is used so as to dissolve the organic chlorophyll inside it but alcohol is heated indirectly as it is highly inflammable and indirect heating is done using a water bath. Water bath is a metallic container and inside it we heat the water and then alcohol which is taken in a baker is put inside this water bath and then it is heated indirectly. Starch test is done with the help of dilute solution of iodine and it turns the starch into blue black color. And with the help of this activity we have seen that the colors which were green earlier they have turned blue black. Another condition essential for photosynthesis is sunlight and we can prove it with the help of this activity. First we will take a discharge plant which has been discharged by keeping it in dark for at least three days. Then a leaf of this plant is covered with a black strip so that this much part does not receive any sunlight and keep this plant under sun for a few hours so that photosynthesis can occur inside it. After that we will pluck a leaf of the plant and perform the starch test just as we have done in the previous activity. We will see that the part which was covered with the black strip it remains colorless while the parts which were exposed to sunlight they have turned blue black. So this activity clearly shows that the parts that received sunlight only they could perform photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide is an important raw material for the process of photosynthesis and it is essential can be proven with the help of this activity. We will take two potted plants of almost same height and de-starch them. Then near one plant we will keep a plate and put potassium hydroxide inside it and potassium hydroxide has the property of dissolving carbon dioxide gas inside it. Cover both the plants with the help of transparent bell jars and seal the bottom of the bell jars with the help of Vaseline so that air from outside cannot enter inside the bell jars. Now the potted plant B is receiving sunlight 
it has air trapped inside it so it is also receiving oxygen and carbon dioxide gas while the potted plant a is receiving sunlight and oxygen but it is not getting carbon dioxide because it has dissolved in potassium hydroxide after keeping these two plants under sun for a few hours we will pluck a leaf from each plant and perform the starch test as we have done in the previous activity and we will find that the leaf of the plant b will give positive starch test means its leaf will turn blue black while the leaf of the plant a will not turn blue black because it has not received any carbon dioxide and not performed photosynthesis so the activity proves that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis important points that should be remembered from this activity are destarching which is done by keeping the plant in dark for 2 3 days and all the starch which is present inside the plant body is consumed potassium hydroxide absorbs carbon dioxide which was present inside the bell jar and vaselin is used to make the bell jar airtight we have learned that carbon dioxide is required for photosynthesis and oxygen gas is needed for the process of respiration and these gases enter the plant body through tiny pores which are called as stomata with the help of guard cells let's first study about the guard cells in dicot plants guard cells are kidney shaped while in monocots they are dumbbell shaped and we will be studying the guard cells which are kidney shaped and are present in the dicot plants they are present on the lower epidermis of the leaf and between the two guard cells the tiny pore is called as stomata stomata can open or close by changing the size of the guard cells which they can do by taking water in or out of them when water moves inside them they become short and thick and stomata is open when water moves out of the guard cells they become long and thin and stomata is close so the function of guard cells is to help in opening and closing of the stomata and stomata we have just seen they are the tiny pores which are enclosed between the two guard cells and they are present on the lower surface of the leaf that is in between the lower epidermis stomata is open when water enters the guard cells and they close when water leaves the guard cells now these are the diagrams of open stomata and the closed stomata so we'll see that guard cells we have made kidney shaped and inside them there is one nucleus and many chloroplast in both of them remember to make open stomatas with thick and short guard cells and closed stomata with long and thin guard cells functions of stomata are exchange of gases for photosynthesis and respiration it also help to lose excess water from the plant by the process of transpiration and during this loss of water by transpiration it also helps to transport water in the upward direction plants do not need the raw materials only for the process of respiration and photosynthesis but they need certain other raw materials also like nitrogen phosphorus iron magnesium etc and out of these nitrogen is the most important raw material as it is used to make proteins and nucleic acids this nitrogen is absorbed in two form in the form of inorganic salts or in the form of organic compounds so inorganic salts are absorbed by the plant body in the form of nitrates or nitrites present in the soil in the dissolved form while organic compounds of nitrogen are manufactured inside the soil with the help of bacteria and then these are absorbed by the roots of the plant